Now, Kelly's back for Pet Corner this week. Good morning to you. Good morning. How uh, are you? I'm very well. Um, you're looking at how we as pet owners can be a bit more responsible when it comes to protecting our natural wildlife. Yes, just a little bit. So why do you want to talk about this? What made you decide this was a good topic? Well, I, uh, I was quite lucky and encountered, uh, wasn't actually in the wildlife, so we won't start saying that I was in the bush somewhere and came across a kiwi, but, um, but I was actually at the wildlife centre and did, of course, get to see kiwis, which were pretty amazing. Wow, was it, were they really cool? Yeah, and the fact that it was a, quite a dark room, they do it deliberately, obviously, so the kiwis are up and moving around, so you actually get quite up close and personal. And that made you think, hmm, I don't want my dog dragging in one of those things. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think anybody <laughs> would. Uh, there's been lots of talk, obviously, I think I was listening to talk about the other day, and this was a subject that came up about pets attacking and killing our native animals. So what can pet owners do to make sure that their pet isn't causing the issues? I think the first thing for, for a lot of owners is we get a little bit complacent and we kind of think, oh, you know, our cat's fine outside, then they're, they're not doing any form of hunting, mm. mainly because if they're not bringing something home, we believe that they're definitely not doing that behaviour. Um, and certainly for our dogs, again, if, if they're quite well trained, we get a bit complacent that they probably wouldn't, uh, you know, go and grab hold of a bird or, or something that they come across. So really it's, um, I think, just being a bit realistic about what you, you're you going to get mm. from your pet. Or we think our dogs aren't clever enough or fast enough to yeah. catch anything. That's also <laughs> That's another awesome. common thought, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So should we play games with our cat in the home to make them sort of hunters, like get them to chase things or not, or is that a bad thing to do? I don't think it's bad. I mean, for, for me, really, it's looking at what that cat needs, what, what it actually, um, is it a natural hunter? And therefore what we're trying to do is, is you know, keep it in the home, let it have some fun in the garden. Um, obviously there's lots of different kind of wands and stuff you can buy nowadays with little fle feathers on. So, you know, to me, just, yeah, just, just have some fun with them and, and let them play with you instead of the wildlife. So how would you know if your cat was a natural hunter? I thought all cats were natural hunters. Oh, I mean, there are some, you know, lazy bonds out there. Um, but, you know, quite, quite a high proportion we know do go out and hunt. Um, some of them will bring you presents home, which uh, most owners definitely don't want. Mm. And, um, but as I say, for, for some, we, we don't even know they're doing it. But um, there were some studies done. Um, I can't quite remember now who, who it was done by, but it was down in, in Dunedin. And they did find that, yes, you know, cats were actually catching things about five times a day. Oh. Just not bringing them home. Yeah, because that's mm. the thing you need find out if you step in that half eaten thing on your on your kitchen yeah. floor. Uh, so what about our dogs? Can we train our dogs not to chase wildlife? Yeah, I mean, look, every dog's different. It's looking at kind of what drives that animal as well. I think if you've got a dog who's got poor recall, um, so, you know, they're not coming back to you anyway, whether there's wildlife around or not, then the reality is you need to train them on that first yeah. um, or keep them on the leash if there's wildlife around. And, um, yeah, again, just, you know, don't get complacent. Be realistic. If, if there is something there on the beach or in the bush, put your dog on a lead, stick to the rules because um, there's lots of people out there who are... Who are not, which is which is a shame. It's very so, mm. Mm. and uh, sorry, I was going to say as well for our cats. You know, one of the biggest things is a lot of people do put bells on on their cats' um, collars, which is great. And again, it can help as a deterrent. But some of them can be a little bit bit quick to either lose their collar or um, the bells don't really make much difference anyway and they can still catch. It's remarkable as you're saying about with owners because a lot of it comes down to how we are with our pets doesn't it? How often I've seen signs saying I think there's dotrels mm. nesting on the beach because they, they go right on the beach to the yeah. nest and yet people are letting their dogs run around these areas. Yeah and I think I think this is a kind of the sad thing where um, for those dog owners and even those dogs that are, you know, very well trained. Well, you can't um, blame the dog, can you? No, and you know, it, it comes down to are you setting the dog up to fail or succeed and, and they're going to fail if they're in an environment where there's something there that's quite, you know, inquisitive for them. Yeah, looks great. Why not try and grab it? And, um, you know, and we're setting the dogs up to, to fail by keeping them off leash in those areas. So. Stick to the rules. Got to be responsible as owners. Hey, yeah. Kelly, thank you so much. Thank you. And if you need help training your dog, head along to Kelly's website, kellymcfarlane.co.nz.